Today at shopdap.com, we're gonna be installing a P3 Cars boost gauge on our B8.5 Project S4. Okay, so before we get into showing you the DIY on this boost gauge, uh, this is a P3 Cars gauge. They mount inside the vent. Uh, they are not the cheapest gauge you're gonna find out there. I, they are my preferred gauge because they mount very cleanly into the vents and then kind of fade into the interior. So when they're not in use, it looks very factory. And then when they are, they, they match all the rest of the cluster anyway. So uh, this is my preferred method. They are also easy to install and don't require a lot of running and boost tapping and all kinds of other stuff. So for, uh, for a DIY, this is actually a very easy DIY once you get past some of this uh, trim work with Audis, which is, uh, can be a little bit of a challenge. With that said, let's talk about the parts we're gonna be installing today. So uh, in the box that we just showed you there, they have this guide. Uh, in this guide, there are instructions to say before installing into the vehicle to test it. Uh, this does plug into the OBD2 port. And so you have basically three pieces of this setup which are this piece, which has this run of wire, and then it plugs into this box right here in the center, which is essentially the, the module and brain of the system. And then it runs up to this gauge, which this is what mounts into the gauge, into the vent itself uh, for this. So they recommend you plug this into the vehicle. So we're gonna plug this into our OBD2 port before we do anything. And then, You're going to want to start the vehicle to check this thing before you proceed with anything. So we're going to start this thing up. And as you can see, it is reading. So because we are reading, we know we're good to go and we can proceed. Now, there's not really a ton of tools needed for this, but uh, we're going to start with this bone tool. This is a Volkswagen one. We will link this in the description below, but this is essentially for trim work. Uh, it's a plastic tool that allows you to get underneath trim, stuff like this. And we are going to need to remove this dash trim. So uh, we can remove that by getting underneath of it. And you would do so with a tool like this, where you can kind of get under there and pop that loose. Same goes over here. And easiest to kind of work underneath like so. And you're gonna kind of work your way around here. Now, usually when you're working with trim like this, you will have to kind of work it up around to get it out. Now, this whole dash trim piece is not necessarily gonna to need to come out, but if you want to get full access to this thing, you are gonna to wanna to take this thing out. So you're gonna slowly work this around and pop this trim loose as you go. What I've always found to be useful in these type of circumstances is to try to get your fingers underneath and feel where it's kind of caught on and then pop your clips loose from there. Cause these are all just pop clips that hold this in place. So you don't have any particular screws or anything that hold that in place. So we're gonna swing that away. We do have a wire there for the hazard switch here. And so you can see that there, and you can see the clips right here are actually what hold this thing in place. So these just pop out of where they mount into the dashboard. Okay, now this trim ring is something that it comes off by itself. It probably will pop off during the process of removing that trim piece, but it is something that 
will likely happen and we can just get that out of the way. Now all of these vent trims are actually have to come out and at this point they actually can fall out of this so you have to be very careful. So what we're going to do is just pop this out and it pulls straight out just clips holding it in no screws no nothing else if you pull any of these vents out there are two metal trims here and here that actually hold these together and keep all of the vents kind of moving together if you lose one of those you're going to be in big trouble because you're not going to be able to replace those uh, and they won't will not be serviceable you have to buy yourself a new vent so we will uh, we'll have a link to vents in the description where you can check one out and get one if you need one but uh, we're going to go ahead and remove this and pop that out of there and now you can see there's only thing holding this in that's left is going to be a wire underneath here we're going to unplug this because we're going to show you this on a table although you may not need to actually sh remove this and uh and we can go ahead and show you the process on a bench okay so here we're looking at our vent assembly and you can take a look all of these are easily removed they just pop straight out like this and we're going to take them all out just so you can see what we're looking at here. Now, what you see along the back of these is what tie, is tied together on them. And that's what these come into play. These tie all of them together so that they, when they rotate up and down, the flaps are tied together. Now, we're removing the bottom ones, the bottom two on this, which means that we're not going to have this particular one, this this fatter one, is going to be the one that's mounted on the bottom. The These ones on the top, this middle, and then these we are going to need to reattach together. So first let's start by funneling our gauge into the correct place. So what you can do is take a look and there is the two buttons are going to be at the top of the gauge and they're going to sit in like so. That slides in and you then pop it in. You obviously have this wire it's mounted at the end, so we're gonna want to funnel that into the correct place. Now, they have, this vent has these channels and you would wanna put it all the way here since it's gonna be mounted on this side, but the space between the wall of it there seems to be too thin, so we actually are gonna to have to go through here to get this fed in so that it will mount cleanly in there. Now, what you do there, once you're in there, is you'll see this hit the bottom here and should sit pretty flat into the edge there and you'll see it sit into these also very flat. Like so. And so you see it sits flush there and flush there. Now we're gonna have to put these upper ones in. I'm gonna try to give it a couple a shot to maybe try to assemble these before we mount them in there. And then we can try to give it a shot to slide them in there in some way like that. Okay, so what you just saw there was we had these two mounted in place. We had the center bar in place and then the lower one in place. And then we were able to get them all the way in, get them locked in, and then pull them out, kind of just rotate them out like so, get the other one slid into place, and we can get that, that in place like so. Just so we can show you with this small bar right here, this in the center you have this round one so on this center bar right here is going to be the circle and then you have the two slits 
there is an upper and a lower, so you will want to make sure you pay attention to the orientation. Uh, basically, the vent should close like so and, and only go up so far. So that's the correct orientation there. If it, if it operates any different way, then you know you've made a mistake somewhere along the way. And we can put our lower portion in now. Okay, so we have our gauge set in place here. It is plugged in the vehicle. We do have our wire hanging here and we want to get that fed down so we can get it plugged into our OBD2 port. So we're gonna start by removing this trim piece here on the side of the dash so that we can get this run down. So all we're gonna do is pull this out, get this fed down so that we can get it plugged into our OBD2 port. And what I'm gonna do is just feed it over this way and then pull this slack through so we can get this entire assembly mounted back in place. And that snapped back in. We have this fed around the side here and then we can feed this down from there. Okay, so here we are on the driver's side. We are gonna get this all cleaned up. We have all this stuff routed in place. A uh, couple quick notes, this fuse box here, there's a small button here you have to push and it will allow this to release from this system here. So once you push this button in, it will allow this bottom portion to slide out and then you can slide this down and you can rotate it in. Now this gives you all the space you need to mount your, your thing here we have some double-sided adhesive on there, and then we have all of these tied up. So just so you can know for context, there are two, uh, two different wires on this, a brown and a blue. Those are for auxiliary sensors if you wanna run them to that. This is if you're running a manual boost sensor. Uh, we are not gonna be doing that. We're just gonna be reading off of the OBD2 port. And then this green wire, you would tap into your headlight switch if you wanted an auto dimming so that way whenever you turn the headlights on it would uh, dim down the gauge itself we're not going to be using that right now uh, so what we're going to do is get them we have them kind of tied to here i am going to tape these just so that these don't rattle together because that would drive me nuts inside the dashboard um, and then we're going to get this all cleaned up onto this right here okay now that we've buttoned all this up got that all cleaned up we are going to reinstall our dash trim now for all you detail nuts, this would be a good time for you to go ahead and do anything you wanna do while your dash is apart, cleaning your instrument cluster, cleaning any of these other items in here. That will give you access that you're not generally gonna have. I'm gonna rotate this in place, make sure that any of your wires that you had hanging out, you have that fixed. And also don't forget your dash trim here this cover will need to be put in place before you snap any of this stuff down. And get this kind of up into this corner first. And just be careful because there are all these clips here that need to clear over top of this trim here. Once we've reinstalled our dash trim, we are all set with our P3 gauge, and we will have some more videos showing the features of this gauge, showing the track package. We're also gonna be doing a zero to 60 in this car stock, and then uh, we will be doing some tuning later on and doing some more zero to 60 testing on this vehicle. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, purchases for parts like this or any others help support videos just like this one. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.